So I've been seeing quite a few comments talk about how Flutter is going to kill React Native because it has a superior this or has a superior that, and I absolutely disagree. I don't think React Native is going to die at all, and in fact, I think the existence of Flutter um, only helps React Native. And as a React Native dev, I'm very happy about Flutter. Like, I'm happy that it exists, um, because I think it's going to improve a lot of warts that React Native has. Now, before I get into my points of why I think that, don't get me wrong, I think Flutter is superior in a lot of ways. One of those things is hot reloading. Like, when I was using Flutter, it was much nicer than React Native's. It worked way smoother. I type in my editor, I save, pops over to the emulator, my new code, and it works great. It doesn't crash. React Native, for example, the packager dies all the time for me. I am constantly restarting it. Um, and so it's just a minor annoyance, but that's that's a place where Flutter's way better at, and there's a lot of other places where Flutter is just dominating from a technology point of view or a technical point of view, Flutter has a way smoother experience, smoother developer experience uh, than the equivalent in React Native. But with that said, I think there's also some things holding Flutter back and that React Native does better. But let's start with my first point, and that is competition. So both of these platforms are now competing, um, and they're competing to be the best thing or best technology, best framework for you to create an app and be able to create it once with one code base and it works on both iOS and Android. And so when two things are competing, um, they're both gonna be getting better. They're both gonna be trying to outdo one another. And React Native is already trying to improve itself. There is a big re-architecting, big re-architecture happening uh, with React Native called React Native Fabric. You can look at this issue if you want to see all the details of what's happening with it. We're also seeing uh, recently a release of Hermes. So this is a JavaScript engine. Specifically, it looks like it helps Android, uh, but it's going to do the following. For many apps, simply enabling Hermes will result in improving startup time, decreased memory usage, and smaller app size. So I think we're going to see a lot of these things where React Native is getting a lot smoother and a lot better in the future. And I think Flutter is going to be pushing it to go even faster. So now that React Native has this competitor and they are doing a lot of things better than React Native, React Native is going to be feeling some pressure, feeling like it's losing some developers to Flutter. And they're going to start improving at a faster rate or they are just going to die. Um, but I don't think they're going to die. I think they're going to be pushing through and improving it at a steady rate, and I'm very happy about that. Um, and that's why I am happy about Flutter. I think it's going to push React Native and pressure it to become even better. And I think also React Native can just steal some things from Flutter and straight copy them. Um, this just reminds me of when Instagram stole stories from Snapchat. Uh, it improved Instagram a ton. Um, and so... I think the same thing will happen in React Native. I think it's going to be stealing some features, and I think React Native is going to be improving because of it. All right, let's do point number two, which is barriers to adoption. So Flutter, in my opinion, has some things that are going to make it harder to adopt compared to React Native. Now, the first thing is the programming language. So if I want to code an app in Flutter, I'm going to be using the Dart programming language. If I want to program in React Native, I'm going to be using the JavaScript programming language. And so a ton more developers know JavaScript than know Dart. Like, I don't know anyone who know, who just, like, was using Dart before Flutter existed. Um, and so because of that, I don't have to learn a whole new programming language to get started with the framework. And that is pretty huge. Now, the counterpoint to this is Dart is not that much different than JavaScript. And you can kind of pick it up and learn it. But there's still going to be some friction in having to learn it. The other thing is, personally, the language kind of felt like Java to me. It reminded me a lot about Java. And it gave me kind of some bad flashbacks to, like, all the boilerplate that I'd have to use with it. And so that was, like, something I was like, mm, no, thank you. Um, so that was one thing that I was like, ah, 
I kind of like the experience of React Native better in that way, and I like the programming language better in that in that choice in that way. Um, but no matter which programming language you like better, the fact is you have to learn Dart to use Flutter, and so that's going to be a hindrance. Now, what I think is going to be an even bigger hindrance, or really the opposite of a hindrance, a thing that's going to help React Native out, is that it's based off of React. So React is the biggest, or one of the biggest, front-end frameworks right now. And the fact that you can utilize your React knowledge and take that with you, how you manage state, how you do all kinds of different things, conditionally show components, yada, 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 all that knowledge you can take and utilize when you're using React Native. And so when I was first learning React and I got up to speed with it, I was like, you know what, let's give React Native a try. And I was learning a few new components because the components are different, but a lot of my same skills that I learned learning React, I was able to use in React Native. So I'm able to get up to speed and be a proficient software engineer in React Native a lot faster if I knew React. And so the marketplace for developers that can learn React Native is pretty large. Like they can get started with React Native pretty fast just by the basis that they know React. Now comparatively, there's just nothing compared to Flutter right now. Like Flutter, if unless you were using um, something similar to Flutter before, there is no Flutter framework that you were using for front-end development before this. Um, and so that is going to be a new paradigm that you're learning. Like when I started learning Flutter, uh, there's block state management, there was some RxJS stuff I was learning, well, I guess RxDx. Um, but yeah, there is just different paradigms of how things work in Flutter that you're gonna be learning. So you're gonna be learning the Flutter framework, you're gonna be learning the Dart programming language, and these are things that are gonna take longer to learn. And that's just, the, that's just the fact of it. It's gonna take longer to learn those things than it is gonna be to learn the stuff in React Native. So I think just the getting started is gonna be a lot faster with React Native. You're gonna be able to get up to speed for a lot more developers uh, with that. The other thing is you're able to just share a lot of your code right now between React and React Native. There's React Native Web, and if you don't wanna do something like that, you can just straight up share a lot of your logic and a lot of your hooks between these two things, and I think that's really nice. Um, now, of course, there is Flutter for Web coming out, and so I'm sure you guys are being like, but what, you could just use Flutter for Web, and then you could share your Flutter code between the web and the apps. And yes, you, I guess you can do this, but it's just, it's just no one's using this right now. Like, uh, it's a technical preview right now, and I think this is like a super smart direction Flutter's going with, and I think it's the right direction, um, and I think it's smart, uh, but it's just not there yet. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, uh, I think at some point it'd be really cool that I can write Flutter for both apps and web, but right now it's not there yet, but this is a smart direction. Um, and so the fact that you can do that for React and React Native right now is another advantage, just another plus. And I think those are like really big things, and that's going to have like a major influence on the Flutter versus React Native. All right, so last thing that I want to touch on is jobs. So the fact of the matter is right now, because React Native was out first, a ton more companies are using React Native. Uh, and that's just because React Native was out first, they started adopting it, um, and Flutter is just a more recent thing. So not as many people have moved over to it. And so a lot of these companies, they're not just going to just migrate their code over to Flutter. It's an expensive thing to do that. Um, so they're going to be sticking with React Native. And so there's going to be a lot of companies that are just going to continue to use React Native. There's not going to be a migration over it to it. And so what does that mean for you as a developer? Well, that means there's going to be at least right now, there's definitely more jobs uh, for React Native than there is for Flutter. So if I was a developer and I wanted a job, or I was looking for a job, or I wanted to switch jobs, and I was asking myself, should I learn Flutter or should I learn React Native? The answer is going to be React Native every time right now, and that's because there's just no Flutter jobs. Now this might change in the future, and I'd recommend watching it if you are interested in Flutter, but right now, Flutter is just kind of a side project framework. Uh, and we can see this if we go to just Indeed. So I was curious. I was like, all right, how much of a uh, advantage does React Native have in this in this like number of companies that are offering jobs? So I'm in Austin. So I was like, let's see how many Flutter jobs there are in Austin. 
And there it turned out there's only two of them. Um, so one of them was a senior full stack software engineer. Cool. The other one was an eyelash extension. So wrong type of flutter. Um, but you can see there's only two jobs. You can compare this to React Native. There is 68 jobs. So there's just more jobs available. So if I'm choosing between those two, I'm gonna choose React Native. There's just more opportunity. Now this is just one area. You can compare this to San Francisco. So 274 and we can do Flutter. There's eight jobs there. Um, now also note, if we just search React, there's 2K jobs. So all these jobs, all these devs there, can easily transition into React Native. Um, and it's, so I think that's that one of those things that is just huge. But there you go. If I was deciding today whether to learn React Native or Flutter, uh, I would choose React Native because of that. Just, I think Flutter is fun and I really enjoyed like using it and building apps in it. Um, but I would not use it uh, more than just as a for fun side project sort of thing uh, because of that. Uh, but with that said, I am definitely keeping my eye on Flutter. I think it has a lot of potential, and I think they're making some very smart choices uh, with their design and what they're doing. And I think Flutter for Web has a lot of potential as well, and so I'm very interested in following that. Uh, but right now, I think React Native has a lot of strong things going for it, and I think a lot of the ugliness and the annoying parts of React Native are going to get smoothed out. And I think it's going to be kind of a race. I think it's going to be, can Flutter improve its adoption rate? Or can React Native increase its uh, disadvantages? Like, it's can it re-architect itself, add features, make them smoother to where it's competing on a better level than Flutter? And Flutter's just not dominating them uh, with features or the smoothness of the developer experience.